On this week's Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine, Bob heads to Edgefield, South Carolina to participate in the second annual South Carolina Southern Sporting Plays Classic, which is hosted by the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation and the South Carolina Legislative Sportsman's Caucus. Also on this week's Sportsman's Table, we feature a fish recipe with South Carolina certified seafood. All this and a whole lot more. And it all begins right now. What I thought of this lead, he might have been a Jay. Fish on. Double up, double up, man. Welcome to our show this week, folks. I've got some special guests. We're at the second annual South Carolina Congressional Sportsman's Foundation event down in Edgefield, South Carolina at the Palmetto Shooting Complex. And I've got, well, I'll tell you what, some prestigious guys with me today. I'm going to introduce Representative Brian White. He's chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee for the legislature. Brian, thank you for having us down today. It's such a great a event that you're doing. Always a pleasure, Bob. It is always a pleasure, man. I tell you, you're, yeah. you're looking great today. I tell you what, you got the bow tie on. Yeah, there you yeah, go. That's yeah. it. Well, speaking of the bow tie, I've got to introduce two of my great friends from, gosh, 15, 16 years ago. Kurt Newbreck, he's the marketing director in the southeastern region for Chevrolet. Thank you. And I've got Ed Bailey over here, regional marketing director as well from southeast region in, in Chevrolet. And I tell you what, the shells over the backdrop are just... I'm telling you, they're about to drive me out of here, man. Guys, <laughs> thank you guys so much for what Chevrolet does and give me the Thanks hive, for okay? Boss. Yeah, man. Thank you guys, Glad okay? And you know, without this guy right here, we wouldn't be able to do what we do in the outdoors. Right. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, you ready to pop some caps? Absolutely. I'll pull. Go ahead. All right. Thank All you, right, man. man. Let me know when you're ready, Bob. Pull. Pull. No bird. Try it again. Pull. Oh. That was a little tricky, guys. Yeah. Yep. All right, Ed, get on him, brother. All right. Somebody pull for me. He's a nasty little bird. That's tough. Yeah. He just kind of. Mm -hmm. On to the next one? Absolutely. Hi, man. Well, this week, folks, I'm featuring a brand new 2018 shotgun from Browning. Again, the best there is. It's the CXS version. It's Browning's new crossover 12 gauge shotgun. You can use it to duck hunt in the winter, sporting clays, skeet, trap. It is a do all shotgun for the guy that wants one gun that does it all. Also, I want to feature the Sound Shield shooting glasses by Browning. 
These are the niftiest thing. If you haven't seen them, log on to browning.com and go to a dealer near you. They've got the earplugs, you'll never lose them. They've come in different various lens colors, but they are awesome. And this week, Bob Redfern's featuring two of Browning's finest products. Log on to browning.com and go find yours at a dealer near you. Coming up after commercial break, we head back to Edgefield, South Carolina with more from the South Carolina Southern Sporting Clays Classic. For generations, anglers from across the globe have put their trust in Abu Garcia because out here on the water, we know our science is your religion. Fish like a fanatic with the latest generation of Revo, featuring up to 24 pounds of max drag, designed for leverage and power, built on corrosion resistance and comfort. World-class adventure awaits with Revo, Abu Garcia for life. When is the last time you traced your roots, not your family's roots? The roots of the food you eat, those roots should run deep, not from afar. Just like the legacy of farmers here in South Carolina. Day in, day out, farmers from every corner of our state are carrying on the traditions of bringing locally grown food to your table. So, choose food that's rooted right here. Choose certified SC grown. It's a matter of taste. Here's another safety hunting tip from South Carolina DNR. While going to and from hunting, you should always transport your firearms unloaded and cased with the actions open or the gun broken down, whichever is safest. This is law in some states, so check your local laws. If you are an avid duck hunter, it would be in your best interest to purchase a floating gun case. If you are traveling by plane, you will need an airline approved hard case that is lockable. Remember, safe hunting is no accident. I got scar tissue there. Same thing with any den or dings on this truck. They all got a story about what happened to them. It was raining. There was only one way out. I could feel the barbed bar wire just digging into the paint. Two bulls were fighting. Bam, hit the truck. Try explaining that to your insurance company. Another ding, another scratch. It would just be another chapter in the story. Every scar tells a story, and you can tell a lot more stories when your truck is a Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is brought to you today by Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine. By the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. By South Carolina, it's a matter of taste. By Pennington Seed, the leader in outdoor forage products. By Browning, Browning, the best there is. And by South Carolina Embroidery and Screen Printing. Well, joining me now are two special guests here at the South Carolina Congressional Sportsman's Foundation event here in Edgefield, South Carolina. I've got our own representative, Mike Pitts from Lawrence. He is one of the integral guys here involved in this event in South Carolina. And we're also pleased to have with us the National Congressional Sportsman's Foundation Director, and that's Jeff Crane. I got to thank both of you guys for all that you do because the great things that both of you all do, both Mike, you at the state, and, and you, Jeff, at the federal level, allow us to do what we enjoy in the outdoors. And, you know, I will, I will ask you first, Jeff, how important are events like this that Mike and all the guys put on and Brian to the National, National Foundation? Well, the National Foundation is the U.S. Congress. We do things in Washington like these kinds of shoots, but it's really important for us to get out, visit with our friends at the state level, because so many of the wildlife management decisions are actually made at the state level. So it's key to have events like this, and we're, we're honored to be here at the National Wild Turkey Federation facility with my good friend Mike Pitts and Brian White and the folks here at the South Carolina State Sportsman's Caucus. Well, Mike, I, I'd like to ask you, I, I know this is the second event here. Last year we had barely 100 shooters. Now this year it's 180. You're going to have close to probably 250 guests. You guys have done a great job putting this event together to support all the things that we do here in the great state. Well, that speaks volumes for the state itself and the amount of support, not just that uh, legislators and outdoorsmen have in the state, but our NGOs, uh, uh, the people who had not in the past been associated with the outdoors came to the event last year and word of mouth it spread quickly and people really truly enjoy it, which is good because now we have individuals hunting and fishing and getting involved that weren't in the past. Well, and, and I would say to both you guys, uh, this is such a great event, okay? 
and, and I've been at the national level and events right. as well in October up at Richard Childress. Right. This, the things that you guys are able to do and the people that you bring, that's so key to, to not fundraising, but just the awareness that you guys bring. Yes, and, and that is a key point. This is about awareness. This is about bringing our partners together, meeting our legislators so that they know they've got allies in Washington, they've got allies in states like South Carolina and across the country, and that's critical. Well, I got to thank you both. Mike? How'd you shoot today, my friend? <laughs> I shot great. See, you got them. I, you like me, you got them all. <laughs> Jeff, Thank how you. about you, man? Uh, I shot great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you, when I do TV and everybody asks me, did you get them? I got both of them. Did you see it? Yeah, every time. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for being a guest on our show this week, and I, I can't thank you enough for what you do for all of us hunters and fishermen across the, the great state of South Carolina, Mike, for you, and, and Jeff, for you and your organization, because I know so many of them up there. Everybody works so hard to make it happen for all of us, and so thank you. Chevrolet presents... Bob's Top 16 Outdoor Destination of the Week, a look at the best hunting and fishing destinations in the United States. Each week, Chevrolet will feature a new hunting or fishing destination in conjunction with Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine and Bob's Top 16. Sebago Lake is deep, averaging 100 feet, clear, and because it's the water supply for the city of Portland, Maine, it's a popular summer spot for vacationers. But the 28,000 acre lake also boasts some of the best fishing in Maine for good average size largemouth and smallmouth bass. Bass tournaments held on Sebago have resulted in hundreds of two to three pound smallmouths and largemouths caught. Smallmouths over five pounds and largemouths over seven pounds are taken annually too. Because Sebago is so deep and clear, it takes a while for the lake to warm. So the best spring fishing doesn't get underway until mid-May. Through mid-June, anglers can enjoy good spawning bass fishing, with small mouths typically found on small gravel bars in coves and on sheltered points, while large mouths are more weed-oriented in coves and creek mouth regions. Much of the lake shoreline is rocky, and savvy bass fishermen who work 15 to 25 foot depths score well on small mouths through summer. Night fishing is productive too, due to the lake's clarity. Wyndham is a good place for motels and restaurants, and housekeeping cottages are available on the west side of the lake. Sebago Lake Marina and Richardson's Marina in Wyndham have good facilities. Check out www.visitmaine.com. For more destinations, be sure to visit bobredfern.com and click on the Bob's Top 16. And to get to your next destination, go online at chevy.com. I was really fortunate to be raised in a family with a strong outdoor heritage. We've been farming and hunting land that's been in our family since the Revolutionary War. Being good stewards of the land and wildlife and passing that on to future generations has always been part of our heritage. My grandfather created a company based on these values and 70 years later Pennington is still guided by these principles. This culture and these values are reflected in all of our products. Let us help you create your own outdoor legacy. For 50 years, Ranger has led the way in innovative, high-performance designs, and we're raising the bar again with a bold new flagship line, the Ranger Z Comanche L Series. These rigs are custom-crafted with a passion for perfection and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver domination at every level. The next generation Ranger L Series. Celebrate a legacy, 50 years in the making. The old 96 district in South Carolina is nestled in the western corner of the state and is a haven for fishing enthusiasts. South Carolina's freshwater coastline wraps around 84,000 acres of water, including lakes Greenwood, Russell, and Thurman. Experience the incredible outdoor adventures, arts, culture, history, and heritage of Abbeville, Edgefield, Greenwood, and Lawrence, and McCormick counties. Plan your next outdoor outing in South Carolina's old 96 district, a part of the South Carolina freshwater coast.
the Sportsman's Table is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Whether you live in South Carolina or out of state, be sure to buy South Carolina grown meats, vegetables, and fruits. Make sure your food is South Carolina certified. It's a matter of taste. My guest chef this week is Tom Mullally. He is a chef instructor at the International Culinary Institute here in Myrtle Beach, as well as a catering company owner, Strand Catering in Myrtle's Inlet. Tom Mullally. Tom, Bob, it's how are always you, my a friend? pleasure. Well, it's great because you right. well, you just have the flavor of not only the outdoors, but fish, okay? Endless. You, you do it, okay? So what do you got for me today? We are here in the Grand Strand. We've got our fresh local Atlantic waters in the background. So yeah. this is fresh uh, beeliner snapper. Oh, wow. Very sim similar to a red snapper. It's just a little bit smaller, okay. but the filleting consistency is beautiful. So we're gonna lightly season it, a little salt and pepper, no bland food allowed as we know. Bland ah, food never impresses. There you go. <laughs> and then we're gonna do this in a little flour and oh, egg really? wash, hmm. just to be a little bit different. We're gonna lightly dredge it in there, shake off the excess. Okay. And here's a little egg wash, just whole eggs and a little half and half cream. Now this is a little bit different spin than you normally do. It is, it is. It's okay. got a little Italian flair to a little uh, red snapper frances. Okay. Hmm. I hear that sizzle. I do. We're going to get that to be a nice golden brown color, and again, it's in a light egg wash. Okay. We're going to top it off with a little lemon sauce, put it over a little petite pasta, fresh baby spinach, a little bacon in that spinach. We're in the south. you got to get a little pig in your ah. diet, Bob. Mm -hmm. You know how that goes. And, folks, you want a copy of Tom's recipe, just log on to BobRedford.com and go to the sportsman's table, and it'll be right there. You know, I will tell you, you get a chance to teach kids how to cook. How rewarding is that while we're watching the fish cook here? I feel extremely fortunate, I really do. Us old chefs won't be around forever, so I've got to sculpt them for the future. And it's a two-year degree, uh, two semesters per year. So when I have students four semesters, you see them getting better and better on week uh, seven as opposed to week three. You know, their knife cuts get better, then they have more confidence, they're excited, and they're cooking well. And we've got a lot of past grads that are doing extremely well for themselves, some working in the big restaurants in New York City. We have 100% uh, job placement for culinary arts. That's awesome. Very proud mm. of that. Wow. And Excellent. the fish is cooking. Mm. It is. It is. Mm. I'm going to get a little nice golden brown color on there. It looks like fish. All right, Bob. We're hearing the sizzle. We're seeing that nice golden brown and color. I got the, I got the plate. Let's go. plate it. Let's plate it. All right. Mm. All right. We've got a little uh, petite pasta here. Okay. Now, what does that mean? These are uh, small little uh, round balls of pasta. You know, pasta comes in all sorts yeah. of different shapes and okay. sizes. All right. We're going to put a little fresh baby spinach down there as well. Oh, yeah. And of course, Bob, we're in the uh, salt, so we have to get a little pig in our diet. Got you a little see, bacon. Yeah, mm. you can see a little bacon in there. I don't know many people that dislike bacon here in the south. No, sir. Certified SC grill. There you go. Okay, mm. again, this is our local snapper. It's in a uh, light egg batter. We're going to place that on top. That's a different look. That's awesome. Isn't that nice? And it's nice and light. It's not heavy at all. And that's mm. what I like about it. We're going to garnish with some more vegetables. This one is called a batonet cut. Teach that knife cutting class at the college. There you go. This is a batonet. So <laughs> Jerry, the cameraman, he's grading me right now. I can tell. Listen, everybody's grading you. <laughs> Good stuff. Odd numbers are always best for eye appeal. Uh -huh. We got some uh, threes and twos in there. Threes and fives always the way to go. We got all that good Look stuff. That. So, excellent, excellent. So put it all together. Okay. All right. Mm. Now we have to top it off with a little fresh squeezed lemon. Look at that. There we awesome. go. Lemon always goes with our uh, fish. So here we have it. We have a seared uh, bee liner snapper from our local Atlantic waters. It's in a light uh, egg batter over a petite toasted pasta, a little baby spinach, bacon, and some fresh vegetables. Tom, as always, thank you for being our thank guest you. chef today. And folks, listen, if you'd like more great menu items just like this, log on to certifiedscgrown.com. See what's fresh on your menu for yourself. And we'll be right back here again next week on another great recipe on the Sportsman's Table. We'll see you then. To find out more information on food that's fresher and tastier, go online at CertifiedSCGrown.com. Buy certified South Carolina grown products. It's a matter of taste. Well, I got scar tissue there. Same thing with any dinner dings on this truck. They all got a story about what happened to them. It was raining. There was only one way out. I could feel the barbed wire just digging into the paint. Two bulls were fighting. 
bam, hit the truck. Try explaining that to your insurance company. Another ding, another scratch. It would just be another chapter in the story. Every scar tells a story, and you can tell a lot more stories when your truck is a Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. Southern Woods Plantation. The name itself conjures up images of a time gone by. A time of towering pines, mule-drawn wagons, and covey after covey of Bob White quail. Southern Woods Plantation has been chosen as one of the top six hunting destinations in America. They offer great hunting, comfortable lodging, wonderful food, and world-class dogs. Southern Woods Plantation, where the past can still be experienced today. I was really fortunate to be raised in a family with a strong outdoor heritage. We've been farming and hunting land that's been in our family since the Revolutionary War. Being good stewards of the land and wildlife and passing that on to future generations has always been part of our heritage. My grandfather created a company based on these values, and 70 years later, Pennington is still guided by these principles. This culture and these values are reflected in all of our products. Let us help you create your own outdoor legacy. New Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8. It's rounder, smoother, and four times more abrasion resistant than original Fireline. That means you catch more fish. Ultra 8 features eight graded strength, heated to molecularly bind individual fibers. It lays well on the spool and is prior to going through your guide. Expect 10% longer casts and superb knot strength. New Fireline Ultra 8, and you thought Fireline couldn't get any better. Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine, brought to you today by the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Life's just better outdoors. By Berkeley, catch more fish with Berkeley fishing products. By Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. By Browning Ammunition, Browning, the best there is. And by Southern Woods Plantation, a place where the grandeur of times past can still be experienced today. Well, folks, I want to talk to the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation and not a better guy that I know to talk about it with his involvement both at the federal level and here in South Carolina is Brian White from Anderson. Brian, I, I just tell you, you guys do so much good things congressional level, both at the state and, and nationally. How important is this to what we like to do in the outdoors? And I know you love it as well. Oh, I do. And uh, growing up hunting and fishing and, and just in the great outdoors, you know, I grew up in a anti-Wi-Fi -Wi world. We just didn't have it. And, and to that point, I uh, still try to get anti with my kids and everything to get them outside and, and the youth that are out here today. And shooting at this complex today, Wild Turkey Federation's done a phenomenal job with it. Uh, we got several groups of kids out here with their fathers and shooting teams, and it's really important uh, to get kids involved in the shooting sports. And that's something that we have tried to do on the uh, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation side of the world is to get the youth involved. You're one generation away from being extinct, and we definitely don't want to be extinct, extinct in the great outdoors, uh, what we're doing with hunting and fishing and taking game properly. Public access is so huge. And the Wild Turkey Federation, folks, uh, other groups do a lot of conservation efforts that people really don't realize what they do. And it's good to have that out here and the sponsors that we have uh, come out and do it, like Chevrolet, like the Brownings, like yourself, that just help promote what we're trying to, to basically preserve uh, and encourage folks to get out and do. Well, the great thing is this is the second annual event you guys have hosted. It is. I I've been here every year and it just keeps getting better. There's 180 shooters, over 250 guests will join us for dinner tonight. I, I just got to thank you for all the hard work well, that you guys have done, not only in the legislature to promote the outdoors, but what you do for the citizens of this great state. And Bob, we can't do it just like you and your shows without sponsors, and we got a lot of good sponsors out here. And it's something, and you'll see it, I hope you, you uh, film at dinner, I know you had some earlier, the amount of youth, uh, male, female, I mean, all we, we got it all here, and we that's do. what it's all about. And, and it's not Republican and Democrat. It's about the great outdoors. It's about God's creation, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. And uh, if you love the great outdoors like you do and like I do, uh, then we'll just keep on keeping on and make sure we leave it better than we found it. Well, have I told you how good you look behind that browning today? I tell you what, this browning makes me look good. I tell, you what, I tell you what, it's hit targets that I never could. So uh, it is a great, great gun. Uh, well, I think you're up next. Here's Nick. So right. you, you, we got to bust these targets. Yeah, absolutely. I, I gotta, Let's do it. I got to.
This could be the money shot. All right. Pull. Pull. Woo! Yeah, man. Mm. Can I quit now? One mm. with the gun. Look at that. Mm. Pull. Pull. That's what I'm talking about. Closing out with a flurry. One more pair. You got to be perfect. Mm. Oh, pressure. Yeah. Pull. Pull. Woo! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Man, look at here. Ah, come on up here, guys. Come on. Listen. Hard to I'll beat a browning. You, yeah, right. listen. I, you know, folks, I have so enjoyed our day down here with Brian White, um, Ed Bailey, Kurt Newbreck from Chevrolet. We've had a great time here in Edgefield at the Palmetto Shooting Sports Complex. It's just an awesome place, and I, I got to thank you, man. Thank okay. you. I appreciate you. True you true have become do. one with the gun. Yeah, and That's I like right. what you do for the great outdoors for our state. Well, thank you. Uh, listen, we couldn't do it without right. you guys supporting us. Yeah. Kurt, Bob, thank, thank you, you, man. It's always yeah. a pleasure to have you down. Yes. Ed, same here. Guys, it's good listen, to be on the outdoors with you, Bob. Uh, yeah. Listen, guys, I tell you, it is always a pleasure to be around such great outdoorsmen, and thank you so much. And, you know, folks, as I always like to say each and every week, the outdoors is my passion. I want it to be yours, too. We'll see you right back here again next week for another great episode. <laughs>